but this image is really quite grainy. There's quite a lot of graininess in that image, and it's normal. It's quite normal for you to see graininess in images, um, and we just live with it. So where does it come from? Zoom it in. The front row can see the graininess there, can't you? Okay, so when we x-ray something, we generate a beam of x-rays, we transmit it and attenuate it by the patient, and then we detect it by the receptor. So here's our mock-up. So I've x-rayed this lump of acrylic. Yep. Um, I've collimated to create a collimation band, a nice narrow band, and I get this image. Okay, so I did this with the simulator. So you can see there's our image, and there's no graininess in that. I've used 62 kV and 1 MAS to get through that lump of acrylic. That gives me an incident dose of 0 0.072 milligray and entrance surface dose of 0.93 milligray. So I can measure the amount of energy going into that block per unit area, which is equivalent to the number of photons going into that block. This is the X-ray beam, 62 and 1. So that's the X-ray beam that I used. Yep. So if I counted, I can actually look, there's that many photons at 20 kV, that many photons at 30 kV, that many photons at 40, that many photons at 50, and hardly any at 60. Now if I counted them all up, I'd get this number here. But basically, these numbers are basically a sum of the whole area under that graph. This is the detector that I'm using. So these are the parameters of the DR detector that I'm using. And it tells me that the X-ray exposure dose that this detector is designed to have and work with is between 0.2 and 3 microgray. It's important to work within the manufacturer's tolerances. So we do have a number or a colour that we're aiming for, um, and that's part of the manufacturer's requirements. So all of the processes that we've talked about, and this comes back to your point about CT and about the matrix, so all the processes we've talked about this morning have been about filling in this matrix, which is the grid of pixels in our system. When I x-rayed that lump of plastic, I gave 5.46 micrograys. What was the dose to the plate? 5.46 microgray, which is actually slightly better than the manufacturer's minimum. 0 0.3 to 0.2 to 3 was the x-ray exposure dose they expected. So three was the map was not the map so I'm I'm not going to be green I'm going to be slightly blue I'm going to be a greeny blue presumably blue is bad or is it red, red. and then what what's what happens yellow, yellow. yellow. <laughs> okay so yellow is bad you see that breaks the that breaks the rainbow doesn't it so so you've got yellow then green then red all oh, right okay so, so I'm slightly orange yeah, with my 5.46 micrograin. So I did all these calculations so you wouldn't need to, but that works out at 110,000 photons per millimeter. Yeah, that dose works out at 110,000 photons per millimeter of X-rays. Now the pixels in my detector are 148 micrometers across. Yeah, so each pixel is a certain size. Um, so that works out 3,000 photons per pixel. So there are 3,000 X-ray photons landing on every pixel. Yeah, um, And the average photon energy for each pixel is 41 keV. So the amount, the number that this pixel is going to um, get yeah, is 3,000 times 41, because each, each photon is going to have on average 41 keV. So it's if you imagine a, a photon carrying a backpack of energy, yeah, that's the energy that it's got. So you've got 3,000 of them turning up at this pixel, and then the detector is going to absorb a certain amount of that energy, and that is going to translate to a number. The computer is going to know that pixel one has this much has got this much energy, has been subject to this much energy, and that's going to be given a number. Yeah, and then pixel two, pixel three, pixel four, and so on until the grid's filled up. Remember that our pixels 
oh sorry, our photons of energy, they might average 41 keV, but some of the backpacks have got hardly any energy in them, any, any of the energy in them, and some of the photons have got loads of energy in. So this is the actual beam of x-rays that we generated, yeah? And so all the photons aren't equal. All the photons in our beam, some of them have got a lot of energy in their backpacks, and some of them have got a, hardly any. This is the spread. There were 29, there were nine photons in my beam that had 18 keV. Yeah? There were 29 photons that had 19 keV in the backpack. There were 74 photons that had 20. The vast majority had about 40 keV in the back. And so, see, there were two that had 60 keV in the backpack that landed on that particular pixel, and one that landed on that pixel that had 19 keV in the backpack. Okay, so that's quite important. So there's a lot of variation in the pixels that land, in, and the photons that land in the pixel, in terms of the energy. And so the number is a different shade of grey depending on um, what the number is. And so we've got a reasonable uniformity here in number. If I zoom it in a bit more, there's quite a good uniformity, but there's still some variation. And that variation comes in from the fact that in any one given pixel, randomly, there might have been quite a few low energy backpacks. And then the next pixel alongside it, they might have had some high energy um, or higher energy um, photons. It's random which of these photons lands on a given pixel. And so you get variation. So even though I've x-rayed a lump of acrylic, and that acrylic is the same thickness, it's just good luck or bad luck which photons arrive at which pixel. And because they've got variations in energy in their backpacks, so quantum model, it's not the only way that we get noise, by the way. It's a form of noise, but it's quite a cool one, and it's one that will, inc as we increase the amount of radiation, we'll get less of it. So it's a form of noise inherent in all X-ray imaging. So you get quantum model wherever there are photons with different energies. And they're in every X-ray beam that we generate. It's statistical. It follows a Poisson distribution. If you want to know anything, if you want to be specific about the type of distribution it follows. The higher number of photons, the less effect on the image. So the way to get higher numbers of photons is either have larger pixels which we don't want because we want to be able to resolve tiny things. So we're not going to get larger pixels. Um, longer sample time. So we could use um, or have a higher dose rate. And either of those things require more photons, basically. So we either keep the same MA, but for longer time, or we have um, a much higher number of pixels per second. Uh, sorry, higher number of photons per second. So those two things are MAS, basically. So there's the difference. So that one there has got less variation than this one. And this one was done at a lower MAS. Okay.